daddy gang to put it in um, our TikTok terms. Um, I have seen girls on the street walk up to men and be like, do you know where a tampon goes? Do you know how many tampons we use? Do you even know how, like, do you know what a X or Y or Z is of a part of our, and they don't know the answer. I was the first vice president or president to ever in office go to a reproductive health care clinic. I'm so grossed out and weirded out. And anyway, we're going to talk to Jennifer Gillardi about all this stuff. Culture, health, policy writer joining me now, former lib Jennifer Gillardi. Okay, Jennifer, this, this, I, this, this whole premise that they campaign on of how women are oppressed in this society and women are put upon in this society, I really am fascinated by it because by any measure, you're the luckiest person in the world if you're a woman born in the United States of America in this era. And yet, there are a lot of women who don't think that at all. No, and apparently this woman on, is I'm sorry, call her daddy. Like, I feel dirtier just saying those words. I, I didn't even know this show existed oh. until this week. And I, I don't know if it's just that I'm getting older, if I've become a prude. I, I don't, I, I, maybe this is how my parents felt when I listened to Madonna's Like a Virgin. But there's something that seems to be so base in the culture right now, and this show is a perfect example of that. And I only heard about it. I Megyn Kelly was talking about it, and rightly so, um, Kamala Harris going on the show. And so I listened to those bits, but then I said, oh, let me go listen to the show myself to see a little bit of what it's about. And in the first minute, you just saw there, she calls her listeners daddy gang, and something is just off about that, that is not empowering for women. But... You know, this Kamala interview, I have to give it to her. In the first five minutes, she sounded more authentic than I think I've ever heard her sound. It was the first thing I've heard her say off script. She didn't talk about being from a middle class family. Um, but that doesn't really say much when you're running for the president of the United States, right? We want to hear about presidential things, what you're going to do. And and I, I get personality has part to do with it. But she kept talking about her mother and agency and how if she came home, you know, having a bad day, her mom would say, you know, give her a sense of agency and what could she do about her problems? Like, you know, there's always an action you can take, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's so interesting coming from a party that wants to take every agency away from everybody, unless it's the agency to abort your baby. That's all you have to scream with these women is abortion. And then they're, forget it. That's all they hear is abortion, abortion, abortion. And or I'm sorry, the 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 agency to change your sex, right? If you want to chop off body parts, but that's the only agency they know. They don't talk about the agency to speak free, freely or to question the narrative, or the agency not to get a vaccination, or the agency women have before conception to not have sex, right? Like there's no agency for that. It's just agency to abort a baby. And I get it. There's some you know, extenuating circumstances that we can talk about when it comes to policy. But the fact of the matter is most of these abortions are birth control related, right? Oops, I don't want the baby or oops, I can't afford the baby. Well, the agency really comes and the reproductive freedom that they love to say is the is the freedom to choose when you re have sex to reproduce. Um, and so, you know, everybody's a victim except for this. And it's interesting, everyone's a victim, particularly of Donald Trump, right? Women are a victim of Donald Trump, always. And Donald Trump's gonna take away our freedoms. And I saw a video on Twitter that um, compared the 1984 character of Goldstein and the two minutes of hate. Do you remember that in the, sh in the 1984 mm -hmm. book? Where the people get two minutes to just, rage against Goldstein. You know, everything is his fault. They get two minutes to scream. And that's Trump. Women get to scream at Trump. He's doing this. He's taking away. And what's funny is he's actually protecting women when it comes to sports, when it comes to their safety and illegal immigrants crossing the border and rape. And he's trying to protect women. I was like, please, can we have men in charge again that will stand yeah. up and protect women? That, which is, it's super benevolent because nobody even likes women's sports. But anyway, beside that, <laughs> let's, let's talk about something a little bit separate here. 
There was an article in Newsweek called How Hot Girls Became the Right's New Obsession. Now, uh, maybe it's just because I'm a man and didn't serve in the Air Force, but I thought we always liked hot girls. Is this now a right-wing thing or what? No, I mean, again, we... It, it, I don't, we've talked to you probably talked about this, but it's like we need experts now to tell us, right? They consulted the experts on this and, and <laughs> you know, they're trying to analyze men. I'm like, men are not that hard. The crisis of experts. Exactly. <laughs> um, and this is these are the same experts that, you know, told us to stand six feet apart and all these experts opinion. And it, again, it's like we don't need this spelled out for us. We you know, our eyes tell us we like beautiful things, right? We like beautiful women, men and women. We like beautiful architecture. We like beautiful art. And this, I think, kind of ties ice in with makers. the- and, and beautiful ice makers. I mean, who doesn't want one of those on their counter? I'm so, yeah. you know, I feel blessed that you have opened my eyes to ice makers. Um, yeah. But this kind of ties into the to the call her daddy thing is it's it's the culture like we can't disengage the culture from the politics. And and when we have our presidential candidates going on shows like call her daddy and Howard Stern and and people on Twitter saying this has five million views. This is big. She's you know, Howard Stern is endorsing Kamala Harris. Well, that's not exactly a ringing endorsement unless culturally you're at a place where you value these people and respect these people. And unfortunately, we do. We're, we don't have our sights on beautiful things anymore. We're not properly orienting upwards. Does that make sense? I just feel like everything is very base. Mm -hmm. And that's what appeals to the voters. And you said it, um, I think, in a tweet, and I it so resonated with me. You said, you know, I'm at peace with whatever the outcome is, because if people are going to vote for Kamala Harris, then we deserve whatever we have coming to us. You know, if you are going to put the call her daddy gang on a pedestal, if you're going to put Howard Stern, they keep talking about Trump. Well, at least Trump has kids that are upstanding and upworthy. And, and yes, they're from different women and he's had sexual dalliances, but his kids are well established and 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 smart and contributing to society right like we're all going to fall but we just seem to be very oriented towards the base and and like you said if if people vote for her then we get what we deserve i think well my buddy mike slater i don't even know that he came up with this but he's he's the first one i heard it from so i always have to give him credit as much as i hate to credit anyone else he calls it the great flattening. Really, there is no mm -hmm. beauty. There is no intelligence. There is no accomplishment. There is no this. We all have to be unlikable, tubby feminist hags without any friends, and then we'll all be equal. It really comes back to base, what you're talking about here. There's no beauty anymore. Yeah, it's kind of catering to the lowest common denominator, right? And we see this in education. We have to lower the bar for education. We see it in DEI. We see it in, again, we now need experts to tell us why men are attracted to beautiful women. And this seems to be a conservative value um, when the left just says, well, you can be any sex you want. There is no difference, right? There is no there is no opposition. There is no hierarchy. And, and that creates a very bland kind of socialist type of culture. And when people become um, okay with that, when they start to normalize those things, I think it just brings us all down. I was listening to a very interesting um, kind of, you know, a little esoteric, but a, a conversation between Bishop Barron and Jonathan Peugeot, who's an iconographer, um, you know, so he took his art in the religious form. And I think this is what happens when you take God religion out of culture, right? It's You're not oriented upward. You're kind of, like your friend said, flattened. And so so they they get excited about Howard Stern and um, call her daddy and, um, you know, the view that Kamala is going on these shows. And then on the right, we have people like RFK who fights for the environment and and kind of animal protection and cleaning things up. And his running mate, Nicole Shanahan, who had, I've been really impressed by, and I've been listening to more of her things and she's creative. She's come up with these really funny ads. I don't know if you've seen the ads she's come up with um, mm -hmm. on her side. And and Tulsi Gabbard, and, and these people seem 
you know, you can you can have your opinions about them, but they seem rightly oriented. I think they're all people of deep faith, whatever that faith is. And they actually seem to be fighting for something good and beautiful. And the left just seems to want us to kind of turn everything ugly. I mean, even architecture these days is just yes, gross. Yeah. It is. Jennifer, yeah, everybody, focus on what is beautiful. Focus on me. Jennifer, thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> it. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.